Hello. One of the writing courses that I teach here at ADA has the theme of globalization. And personally, one of the most interesting discussions that occurs during this course is that of social identity. Now, through different reading assignments and discussions, the class comes to the conclusion that they all share uh, a global identity. Now, this isn't really that surprising because the class is comprised of millennials. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this term, a millennial refers to anyone who was born in the 1980s and 1990s. Although different observers have different indications of time, we can say if you are, if you are 18 or 35 years old today, you are probably a millennial. So I think the majority of this auditorium, myself included, can be classified as millennial. But unfortunately, the word millennial does not have a positive connotation in society. Millennials are often portrayed as narcissistic, self-interested, entitled, and unmotivated. So much so, if you look to the board, you'll see various news headings uh, on millennials. And none of them are positive. If you read the news on the topic of millennials, you'll come to the conclusion that all youth of today are selfie-taking, social media-obsessed, self-interested, lazy egotists. So this raises some really important questions. Why is this discourse so negative on con the contemporary youth? What have we done to deserve these messages? In this examination, if we look at the characteristics of millennials of today and what millennials have done to contribute to society, I think we'll find the answer. So first, for the characteristics. Millennials have grown up in a world influenced by globalization. We're the first generation to live in a world that's entirely wired and connected. This has had strong implications on how we communicate with each other and the world around us. So much so that most of the communication that millennials do is through digital devices. In fact, millennials that have cell phones, which is the majority, will spend more than 80% of their lives with these devices next to them. I think this is really profound. Unlike previous generations, we don't have uh, the great world war like the greatest generation has had. We don't have transformation of civil, li civil, civ uh, civil liberties uh, or the changing geography like the baby boomers have. And yet, we're still undefined. We're letting this discourse define us. Millennials are the most studied generation. And in fact, recently, millennials became the largest generation in the workforce. Now, in the business sector, in the workforce, millennials enjoy flexible working hours. They don't like the standard 9 to 5 office work. Furthermore, because millennials grew up in a world that's connected and wired, millennials are highly adaptive and actually welcome change. So much so that old adages are now changing. These adages for millennials are now this. Experience no longer equals capabilities. If we look at the tech world, we'll see many people with very strong capabilities, but not many years of experience. Age no longer equals wisdom. Millennials have grown up in a world where information is at their fingertips, and that they can access data instantaneously. And finally, work does not necessarily equal progress. Millennials are proponents of efficiency and time-saving methods. Unfortunately, this has somehow transformed into millennials being lazy. Now, looking at what millennials have done to contribute to society, there's a lot of anecdotal uh, information uh, regarding our contributions. For example, many people point to Silicon Valley as an area where millennials have contributed greatly to innovation. Furthermore, the Arab Spring protests that occurred in the Middle East and North Africa 
were started by youth. But what these antidotes and all antidotes on millennials have in common is that millennials were left out of the decision-making process. Now, if we look at the political world and business sector, we'll see that the average age across the world really uh, excludes millennials. So on the political sector, in the United Nations system, the average age is 49 years old. For executive leaders in government, so heads of state, the average age is 60. And for parliamentarian and legislators, the average age is 53. Now, although there are exceptions to these rules, this is the generality of what's going on in the political sector. Now, in the business sector, Fortune 500 company CEOs, the average age is 55. And in fact, only four CEOs in all Fortune 500 companies are millennials. And the world's billionaires, the average age is 63. And there's actually empirical evidence that shows to become a billionaire, you have to work for 32 years, or all the billionaires have worked for 32 years to obtain the status of billionaire, which obviously would disclude most millennials. So the question arises, how do we change this discourse? How do we change the trajectory that millennials are on? If we're known as an undefined generation with small contributions and negative characteristics, what's next? Well, unfortunately, there's no easy answer. We're at an apex in society, and millennials can choose to follow the same rhetoric from these slides or make a conscious decision to change it. Now, the first thing to do, in my opinion, to change this rhetoric is to get involved in society. Millennials are the largest generation in the workforce, as I previously mentioned. However, they're also the largest generation that is political, politically apathetic, meaning they're not politically active. I think this has a huge detriment on our generation and is a strong indication of why this discourse exists. Furthermore, there are many world issues that must be addressed during our lifetime. Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, previous generations have created many issues in contemporary society. The effects of climate change, increased population and shortage of food and water sources, extremism, the list goes on and on. Millennials are unique, and we can use this as an opportunity to either change society for the better, or stay in the same trajectory as previous generations. Now, in final note, the one takeaway that I want to give from this talk is to not let your age define you, but let your actions define an error. Thank you.